author who's out with his new book, The Immortal Nicholas. Glenn, it's great to see you. And so Thank you. we see unrest in Baltimore, in part because a lot of the folks there wanted to see a conviction. And they feel that they, as a city, have been railroaded into poverty, into a life in which the cops are out to get them, and nobody cares. Your thoughts? Well, the, the way to make people care is to not burn your city down. Um, that's not a way to make people care about things. Um, I think they have been uh, railroaded by progressive policies. So has Chicago, so has Detroit. Lots of places have. Um, that's why you get involved in the uh, political system. Um, are the cops bad? I think they're bad cops, but I think they're more good cops. Uh, you know, there's, there's bad people, there are bad bakers, there are bad TV show hosts, there are bad everything. That's the way society is. The job, the, the job of, uh, of uh, people who really want justice is to strengthen um, the justice system, not weaken it, mm -hmm. to strengthen the community ties, not weaken them. I want to shift gears with you because there, there was a, an extraordinary column out today that we're to talk about politics in the Wall Street Journal that really got to the reason why in this Republican race for president, Donald Trump is, is dominating the GOP field, despite the controversial statements, despite his critics saying he's a racist, he's bigoted, he's unhinged, and so on. Yeah. Now, the, the, it was written by William Galston, who used to advise President Bill Clinton. It's, it's about the very, very unhappy white working class voters. And Galston points out that over the next decade, it's 95% of, of all jobs, he writes, will be in the service sector, okay? And of the 15 occupations with the most projected job growth, only four need a college education. Only four. Nine of those offer median wages under 30 grand a year. So the author writes this, quote, economic anxiety, Democrat, uh, demographic resentment, and fears of physical security make a toxic combination. Trump did not create these sentiments like demagogues throughout history. He is exploiting them for his own purposes. Your thoughts on that? I don't know. I read that um, article, um, and uh, I thought, quite frankly, that a lot of it was um, hooey. Um, what, I, what I do think is that he is exploiting the people, and, and I wouldn't say it's just the white working class, I think, it's, I think it's everybody, that feel as though nobody is listening to them. Why, why are there riots in the streets of Baltimore? Why don't we actually fix things in Chicago? Why is Donald Trump growing? The same reason. Nobody seems to be listening. Nobody who's actually been voted into office is listening to anyone close to the problem. And that's why when we, when we became unhinged from the, uh, from the Constitution, that's why this is happening. Because the power is all in Washington. Washington is in a different world, a completely different world. We need the power to be closer to the people again so we can solve our own problems and we can actually have people that we can go address and see and we can talk to and they'll listen to us. Donald Trump is, a, is nothing more than um, a reaction uh, that we warned about. When I was on Fox, I warned about this. I talked about a pendulum swing back. You don't want this to happen. If you don't listen to the American people or any people, well, what do you think they're going to go a different direction. What do you think is likely to happen now? Because right? Trump has got 41% of the Republican vote, at least according to one poll. Yeah. And there are now some people coming out and saying that if he's the nominee, we, somebody said this on our show last night, uh, Hillary Clinton will win 49 out of 50 states, and the Republican Party will face devastation like it's never seen before, that they will they'll give up all the, the gains they have. In state, in state legislatures and so on, because so motivated will the Democrats be to get to the polls and stop him? Um, I, I know that I won't go to the polls. I won't vote for Hillary Clinton, and I won't vote for Donald Trump. I just won't. And I know a lot of people that feel that way. I know there's a lot of people in the GOP who are like, look, he's better than um, Hillary Clinton. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, the guy last night, he, he, he didn't even know what the triad was. He didn't, he didn't even know what are, um, you know, the, the, the missile silos and the um, a strategic air command with the missiles on the planes and our nuclear submarines. He didn't even know what that meant. Uh, he couldn't even answer that question. It was bizarre. Um, he's also a giant progressive. So I, I can't vote for a progressive. I can't vote for Hillary, and I can't vote for him. I, I said, mm, 
weeks, oof, probably a year and a half ago, that I thought we were entering the times of the Whig Party, that the Republicans were going to go the way of the Whigs, who they demolished back in Abraham Lincoln's time. Um, and I think that's happening. They have not, they, they got power, they said we just have to have the House and the Senate, we got it. Now they're saying, well, we have to have the House and the Senate and the White House. Well, wait a minute, we heard that before with George W. Bush. They're not listening, they're not doing what the people have hired them to do. If they put Donald Trump in, uh, try to put him in, in office, if that's what the people want, um, there you're going to see an end to the Republican Party. It will just be over. There'll just be nothing left. Before I let you go, who do you like? Ted Cruz. He's your guy? Like, he's my guy. I like Ted Cruz a lot. I mean, I could consider voting for Rubio. I disagree with Rubio on a lot of that stuff. I like Rand Paul uh, an awful lot. Um, but uh, I'm trying to think who else there is. But The arena... Yeah, she's okay. I mean, I, I think there's only there's only Christine. three people really. There's really only three people. I, I think there's gonna be, it's going to end up. It, it's going to quickly whittle down to these four people. It's going to be Trump, Cruz, uh, Rubio, and possibly Chris Christie. Because I think you're going to see Chris Christie start talking to the progressives in the Republican Party that like big government. I think he's going to make some inroads. But really, it's those three. And in the end, I think it's it's Cruz and Trump. Exciting to watch. Glenn, great to see Thanks you, as always. Thank you very much.